uh, those who aren't able to log on at this time, we're making all of these webinars available on our uh, Student Success Center uh, website, uh, along with some resources from the field and the, and the presentation PowerPoints, as well as resources that our presenters identify, njstudentsuccess.org. And um, uh, Lee, if you could go to the next slide. So uh, we're going to hear today from the team at Essex County College talking about student affairs practices in a virtual world, which is uh, definitely relevant and needed and useful in, in today's temporary uh, new normal that we're in. Um, Lee, if you can go to the next slide, please. So welcome, everybody. My name's Jake Vardman. I'm the executive director of your statewide Center for Student Success at the Council of County Colleges. We started this in partnership with the Distance Education Affinity Group, um, the Academic Affairs Affinity Group, and now the Student Services Affinity Group, really to help strengthen and support all of our colleges as we deliver online and remote instruction and student services. Um, this semester, obviously, the summer, and, and quite possibly part of the fall. Um, so we hope that you find the information that you learn in these webinars to be helpful and valuable. Uh, so far, the webinars have been uh, very helpful to those folks who have participated. And consider yourselves some of the lucky few. You know, this is one of the hottest tickets in town. These webinars sell out as soon as we send the link out. Uh, sell out, it's not like we're, we're charging. But uh, the seats fill very quickly. So thank you for uh, your interest in, and uh, getting a seat right away. Uh, next slide, please. So let me just go over a couple of, of uh, the uh, housekeeping things here, just so we don't, one, uh, 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 crash the system is most important. It's not that we don't want to see your smiling faces. It's not that we don't want to hear from you while our presenters are talking. It's that for those of you who have been on Zoom calls, and I'm sure all of us are all Zoomed out as much as I am, these systems have failed us. They've crashed multiple times. We just don't want to crash the system while we're recording this. So if you're able to mute your mind, if you're able to turn your camera off, unless you're one of our presenters, again, it's not that we don't want to see you. It's just that we don't want to crash the system. Um, throughout the presentation, we're going to hear from several of um, the Essex County College team today. Through, throughout the presentation, as you have questions, you have a chat option. It should be at the bottom menu of your Zoom screen. You can enter, you click the chat, you'll see the chat will appear on your right. Type your question in the chat and we'll do questions at the end after our presenters have had a chance to cover their information that they're sharing with us. Um, and other than all that, um, uh, Dr. Bello DeCastro, did I miss anything on the front end? No, I think you're good. Okay, great. So. We're going to hear a, 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 a general overview with some deep dives in, in the following um, topical areas. Leadership and response, particularly to the COVID-19 outbreak from an institutional perspective. Um, the role of marketing communications. What are some of these critical virtual student support services that Essex County College has put into play to ensure students can be successful? Uh, what, uh, what do student life and activities programs look like now in a virtual environment? Um, how is uh, Estes County College able to deliver student development and counseling? And what resources um, um, does the college make available to, to um, uh, students who are parents and community members through its child development center? And uh, the work that Estes County College is doing in its wellness center and food pantry to ensure that st students have um, emotional support and also have access to food that they need in order to complete their studies and not be hungry. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to turn this over um, to a long, long time friend and, and collaborator on many projects, someone who's helped the council a lot, a lot of times in my time, and that's Dr. Keith Kirkland of Essex County College. Take it away, Keith, and thank you all folks for being with us and thank you to the team at Essex County College for doing this for us today. Thank you, Jake. Bef before I go into my part, I wanna acknowledge the support of, two, of, of a group and one special person. First is to my Student Affairs Affinity Group members, which I probably, a little biased, I think it's a great affinity group. They provided assistance with me. I know that we'll be collaborating as we move forward on 
best practices in the virtual world that we're providing. And I, I just thank them ever so much for their support and for being a group that I can always rely on for assistance. The second person, and I, she didn't think I was going to do this, but I am, is our Associate Dean uh, Patricia Slade. Without her support and her leadership with our student affairs team, this presentation would not be uh, being able to be done today. So Dean Patricia Slade, thank you very, very much for your support. Next slide. It, it all begins with leadership. And one of the things we have is a, a what I think is a fantastic president, Dr. Anthony Monroe. A little bit about him, what makes him kind of unique in this way is that Dr. Monroe actually was a, a executive level healthcare uh, administrator for um, the, uh, I think it was the um, Ross University School of Medicine. And also uh, he was a, a upper level administrator for the Trinity Hospital in Chicago, while also having the experience of being a community college president. So Dr. Monroe had a very unique uh, perspective of what it means to handle and deal with an epidemic. He kind of had the foresight early in February saying, we got to come together and talk about how we're going to prepare our college for this upcoming pandemic. And by the uh, first week in March, we had formed a pandemic a task force. And it's one charge that the president gave us was to implement plans to provide academic support service to all of our students. He didn't want any student to be harmed uh, or to lose the ability to teach to learn and grow and development through our college services. And he, he made that his priority, which is part of our students first uh, perspective that we have. The task force really consists of a lot, it's a cross-functional team from various areas, finance, student support, HR, uh, IT, all came together early in, in, in March or late February and March and began developing what we consider was our approach, our plan for dealing with the pending, impending um, uh, pandemic that we knew would be coming our way. And on March 13th, in, in response to our Governor Murphy's Executive Order 104, which was the cessation of all online classes, Essex was up and running with its plan. Lay next slide. One of the first things we did was we really got our, our Office of Marketing Communication really involved with uh, daily message to our students to let them know what services were available because we knew getting to and communicating with our, our students what was happening was very important. And this, all, this information went on out to faculty and staff also. So communications was a real big piece of making sure that everybody was connected and understood where we were going and how we're going to provide services to our students. Next slide, please, Lee. So one of the things that we did was we actually put this right front and center on our, our web, our, our homepage of our web, uh, of our, 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 um, our web page. And here, if you look at it and leave, could you click on the guide to online? One of the things that we did was we posted uh, this information on March 13th, when this went remote and live, and we couldn't provide services in, on the uh, campus anymore, this services was outlined for the students so that they would be able to continue to receive the support they need through various online methodologies, telephones, emails, text messages, and of course, virtually through Zoom meetings. And we're gonna talk a little bit later on about the, uh, on the right you'll see the services that was initially offered, which we're going to talk a little bit more about the ones on the left, which was our tutoring and our library, but library services were really big to our students too. And next slide, Lee. Hey, Dave. Hey, next slide. Sorry to bug you. I was wondering if, um, actually, have my Crystal's cell phone number. Does she have her office? Okay, Lee, go ahead, please. Uh, and one of the things that we're going to be doing virtually coming up, we're really excited about this. We're gonna have a, uh, a celebration of student achievement that's gonna be done virtually for our students. We're gonna have our college, you can get our board of trustee leadership. We're gonna have student leaders give us 
We're going to acknowledge students through the team speech. They have both uh, clips from our students celebrating their, student, uh, their achievements that will be just on display through this virtual or this uh, celebration of student achievement. That'll be a, a virtual event. And also, too, there's going to be some divisional student achievement celebration happening throughout the college. So not only are we just what we need to do to support students through these very difficult times, but we're also going to celebrate their achievement. But they have persevered, they have endured, and on us, their two ethics. And we decide to make sure that we show everyone how we feel about our students and the pride we take in our students. And with that, I think I'm turning this over now to Dr. Lee Bell de Castro. Not yet. Still your slide, Keith. <laughs> oh, I still have the tutorial. Dr. June Fassad, our, our Associate Dean of uh, Learning Services, could not be with us, but she did want me to make sure she uh, uh, know that we do have these virtual uh, tutoring services. We have well over 30 tutors who are available to do Zoom tutoring services to our students in practically every course that we offer at our institution. And also we have the virtual library services to uh, augment any type of uh, study or research that our students do. Our libraries are working remotely and provided these services to our students through the, uh, either Zoom or through phone or through email to assist them with uh, supporting their education on campus. Now I'm going to support, turn it over to Dr. Lee Bella de Castro. Thank you. Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Uh, so as mentioned, I'm the Associate Dean of the West Essex Campus and also online education, but I'm also the Vice Chair of the Distance Education Affinity Group. And um, as Jake had mentioned earlier, one of the things that our group decided to do was really provide the state with this type of professional development. And we have been so focused on emergency remote teaching and online teaching that um, we really wanted to get out there what various campuses were doing across the board in a virtual space for their students on a, not only on the academic level, but now um, for you know, general student well-being. <clears throat> so one of the things that, the first thing that we did, and Dr. Kirkland and I had discussed this, where we knew that a lot of our students were not familiar with our LMS system, which is Moodle Rooms. I know um, we have institutions here that uh, use Canvas and others that use Blackboard. Well, we here use uh, Moodle Rooms. And uh, I know, I think Bergen uses Moodle as well. So uh, Keith and I, we did uh, two sessions. We had roughly 150 participants student-wise that were able to, to log in with us, ask us questions re in real time, also go through how to log in and, and just the basic maneuvering of the learning management system. So we also have that planned for our upcoming uh, summer semester as well. On another note, um, we have our student, su student success coaches. And really what they've been doing is they have been fielding questions in terms of, um, you know, they're, they're serving as intermediaries between the faculty and, and, and students. They're fielding questions. They are answering uh, questions about advisement and registration. Um, they're following up with students identified. And we have that, that high touch that we're always looking to do because we want to keep our students engaged in the classroom and also within the institution as well. So they have been doing an excellent job in terms of keeping our students engaged. Um, our student success coaches, they're, they're helping out with Moodle. If there's any type of functionality issues, they have been resetting pins, resetting passwords. Uh, additional registration assistance, and they've also been manning our, um, or some of them have been manning our student support at essex.edu. That was one of the other things that we knew that we needed to do. In terms of, of my role as, as running online, we knew that our faculty needed support, so we started our faculty support helpline in addition to our online helpline, but now we knew that we needed our students um, as well because we we couldn't have all 7,000 students flooding one email address so we put together a small team to actually monitor our student support at ethics.edu once again consisting of full-time staff uh, uh, college success coaches and they have been once again helping out with Moodle web services navigation 
uh, registration guidance, referring uh, student support services to the academic areas, including any types of issues that they have been experiencing in the classroom with their, prof uh, with their professors. So that support line has been just extremely beneficial uh, in, in multiple ways. Okay, so here at West Essex, uh, we are located in West Caldwell. We are the branch campus. We have about a little over a thousand students here. Um, and really what we've been doing, and I think our counselors on the line, uh, so we've been providing virtual counseling and advisement, and I know that she's been extremely swamped and busy, and um, she has been doing our, our Zoom meetings or her Zoom meetings and, and providing one-on-one -on -one counseling for our students in, in need. She's also been providing registration, assistance, financial aid, any, any type of questioning she's able to refer um, those students to. We also have a, a virtual incident admission date <clears throat> or incident admission dates with some four-year institutions. We had one about a month ago, and I believe we had six or seven students um, that were accepted directly into Montclair, which was uh, great. I think that happened at the end of March. We're also providing to our own tutoring services here at the campus as well. And it doesn't mean that our students can't attend or, or use the services at the main campus, but they're more familiar with our, with our tutors and learning associates here. So they're, they're also uh, a little comfortable. So uh, it, it's a wonderful thing that we're able to keep them employed, obviously during this time. And they're still able to work with our students that they are familiar with. And one thing as, as working in online, um, this has given us the opportunity to really expand our online courses. As every institution in here knows, there may have been some courses or, or course offerings that have not um, been available online, but now due to emergency remote teaching, which is what we've been talking about these days, um, you know, we have been able to, to really expand the course offerings and some potentially new degrees. So that's just some of the things that we've been doing here. And I am going to turn it over to Mr. Graham, who's going to explain to you what Student Life and Activities has been doing. Jamil? Take, take that picture. Thank you, Lee. Um, first off, good afternoon. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I'm happy to be able to join you all and tell you a little bit about um, what Student Life and Activities has been doing at Essex County College. I know um, I've had the opportunity to reach out um, with some of my peers. Um, I see Russell um, in the meeting um, with the other directors across the state. Um, so hopefully a lot of the campuses, you know, will eventually be doing a lot of the same things. We all have some very good ideas um, from the um, onset. Uh, with the support of my staff, to be honest with you, I have a very ta talented staff. Um, my coordinator, uh, Shalia Hunt, came up with the idea of a virtual cafe. Um, Mr. Ott, uh, Joe Ott, who's our program coordinator at the West X campus out there with Lee, um, happens to have the talent to pull it all together. So, you know, we've been trying to offer students as much as, as, much as we can. Um, virtual field trips, we've done aquariums. Um, the National Museum of National History. We've even done a, a virtual tour of Mars. Um, chess lessons, guitar lessons. Um, the Associate Dean of Student Life and Development, Dean Slade, was able to join us for an Earth Day celebration, um, where she taught students, you know, how, how, how to plant seeds. Um, yoga, meditation, and, and, and sessions where we just, you know, open it up to students to allow them to, um, you know, get things off their chest and so forth. Next slide, Lee. Um, one of our biggest virtual events, so to speak, was a virtual uh, open mic that we put together. And essentially what we did was we opened it up to the entire um, Essex County College family to submit any um, video, inspirational quotes, artwork, um, whatever the students and, and, and staff and administration um, chose to put together. And, and we packaged it up and we distributed it through a link. Um, one thing that we do do with all of these events is that we record them. Um, because, you know, sometimes we may only get a handful of students who may come to the live session, but after the fact, you know, you may get 50 to 100 views. Um, for instance, with the virtual open mic, we, you know, we have about 241 views. 
which is pretty good considering all the demands on students' um, time right now, especially with finals and everything. Um, in regards to our clubs and organizations, we've been able to hold um, inter-club council meetings um, through Zoom with club leaders um, to help talk with them and help work them through this um, transitional period. Um, one of our clubs, the Bio Pre Med Club, actually held an election um, via Zoom, and we're working on um, holding elections for all the other clubs and organizations, especially our Student Government Association, in the very near future. And then finally, I guess what perhaps is the biggest uh, project coming out of student life and activities is with the help of the uh, college community, we're putting together our own um, virtual online new student orientation, um, which will be hosted through our learning management system, courtesy of uh, Dean Lee Bella de Castro, and online learning will be hosting a new student orientation through Moodle, where we be, will be able to enforce a mandatory nature as well as make it available to all students registered at the college. So thank you. With that, I'll be turning it over to Dr. S. Aisha Steplight Johnson, my colleague and Director of Student Development and Career Services. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Aisha Steplight Johnson, so Director of Student Development and Career Services. So one of the biggest things that we've done includes our census day, a kicking off with census day, thank you Lee, which was held on April 1st. And, you know, as the nation shifted to remote work and learned as a nation how to use Zoom, this was our first experience doing this on a college-wide level. So fortunately, everything worked out. So we were able to educate our students, our community, faculty, staff about the census, the importance of the 2020 census. And our theme was what we could lose. So we've been involved with the census over the last year, different activities at the state level, county level, the city of North level. So we pulled it all together. We had um, various faculty, staff, students participate, Dean Kirkland, our president, and fortunately we were able to have the regional director from the New York Census Office to participate. We had about 80 participants on the call. It was recorded and posted on YouTube so that we always have it as an educational resource for our students to be able to refresh their understanding about why it's important to complete the census and what we could lose in terms of the resources that are dependent upon a fair and accurate count. We also had people as part of the presentation to speak in different languages because we wanted that to be part of our theme at Excess County College, that the census is available to reach people for whom English may not be their first language. And then also if they go home and they're speaking with their parents, their grandparents, their neighbors, they realize that they are able to communicate in various languages to get this important message out. Next slide, please. We've been providing various career services virtually, remotely. So for example, we had a Zoom presentation specifically about the Newark Summer Youth Employment Program jobs so that our students would have an understanding about the opportunities that are available and the process for applying to those jobs and who's eligible. We've also had Zoom resume writing workshops. We've had Zoom workshops on job search techniques. We've also sent out job announcements to students. We use Career Coach in addition to provide job information to our students. We've also emailed them a flyer encouraging to complete an online fillable form to indicate the career services assistance that they need right now and the type of employment that they are seeking. So whether it's something they're looking for towards their career, an internship, or if they're looking for something right now. So we're able to give them information about the hot jobs that are in, let's say, grocery retail, general retail, warehouses, some of the positions that are on the New Jersey COVID-19 portal. In addition, we have um, a workshop actually today about LinkedIn. So teaching the students about 
how to take a photo, post a photo, create their profile, and search for a job. Next slide. We've also like transfer services remotely. So we've had virtual instant decision days with various four-year colleges. We have worked to connect them with the admissions offices at various colleges. And we've also had a financial aid workshop with a representative from a four-year college so that our students could get an understanding of what is important, what steps they need to take to get ready to make that transfer from Essex County College to a four-year college and all the things that they need to keep in mind in terms of how financial aid will work as they make that transition. We also had flyers for our transfer students who also complete a fillable form so that they could indicate specifically what transfer need and they could also let us know the status of where they are in their process of applying to the four-year colleges, being accepted, and making a commitment to what school they plan to enroll in in the future, especially come this coming fall. And in addition, overall, our Student Development and Counseling Unit actually had a chat with students yesterday via Zoom. So that was our first time trying that out as a whole unit. We also provide counseling services remotely relying upon email and the telephone, differently abled services, still assisting students with their accommodations and helping them with testing in terms of connecting with testing if they need accommodations. And we've also been making outreach calls to students. And we specifically try to focus on the students we're not hearing from, the students who aren't replying to email, because we realize that some of our students do not necessarily have access to a computer at home or the internet at home or Wi-Fi at home. Next slide. So I will turn it over now to my colleague, Ms. Virginia Flanagan. Good afternoon, everyone. Just want to let you know that the Essex County College Child Development Center is successfully providing early childhood remote learning experiences for infants, for toddlers that are nine months um, to three years old, and for preschool children that are ages three and four years of age. On Monday mornings, our families are invited to attend um, the children's classrooms weekly live virtual meetings. Teachers lead discussions uh, regarding uh, the, I'm sorry, teachers lead discussions about the learning objectives for the week and they share age appropriate activities with the children, which include read alouds, music, movement, and a brief activity. Also, this is a very social time for the children and the families. During the experience, families are able to make a social connection with one another, and children are, are having the opportunity to say hello to one another and to uh, virtually interact with one another. Social emotional development is an important part of the early childhood learning experience. On Monday through Friday, teachers send out daily recorded learning experiences that they have prepared for the families to implement uh, in the home with the children. The activities are designed to support continued growth and development, ensuring that children are meeting important milestones and acquiring appropriate skills needed for the next stage in their educational process. On Fridays, teachers meet with the children and the families and they reconnect again um, through another live meeting and children are, are again engaged in music and other activities. The families have the opportunity to uh, collectively discuss the week's activities and their successes with the activities and teachers share new information about the upcoming week with the families. Families are invited on Wednesdays uh, to a live parent center meeting that is hosted by the family worker. And the family worker shares information about local resources, talks about school business for the upcoming year, and tries to engage the family in activities that they feel that are fun that the families will enjoy. Thank you. 
I'll now turn the meeting over to Dr. Zoya McCants. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Lee, you can jump to the next slide. Lee, you can jump to the next slide. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So for the Wellness Center, we've been hosting a virtual cooking demo uh, that was hosted by our intern from, um, from Montclair State University. Cooking de Our demo was a, a pasta dish and we utilized all of the food that was in our food pantry. So it was the penne pasta with uh, the pasta sauce and a few of the vegetables from the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. And we were also able to allow students to come in to pick up those particular items to also participate in that cooking demo. In the food pantry, we are also open Monday through Thursday from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. by appointment only. At this time, we are also serving some of our staff at Essex, at Essex and we also have them come in at the same time frame and schedule an appointment with us. We do keep our doors open to about 3 p.m. So just in case we have anyone who can't get there by two. Um, so lastly, we uh, have our Espresso Cafe. In this particular cafe, we hosted every Friday in the month of April, and we had a range of topics from free talk, adjusting to online learning, journaling, and yoga and meditation. The free talk is just about students who had some questions about their coursework or how to communicate with their professors if they felt that they were not understanding some work. Some of the questions came about uh, how does a student uh, tr to transfer from having an actual book in their hand and being able to use a highlighter and then having to utilize a virtual book. So they so wanted to share their ideas about how do you use Adobe, how do you use some features in Adobe to highlight some areas for yourself and to keep a planner or organizer? So that's been helpful for them. We also talked about journaling, and that has been helpful for a few students who do attend any of our um, individual sessions or group sessions. I also help students with deep breathing. Uh, I give them links for yoga and, and meditation. I start them off with three minutes of meditation and then gradually move up to five minutes and sometimes 10 minutes. Uh, we hosted a virtual uh, group on Zoom for managing healthcare visits through telehealth platforms. And in that particular uh, group, we talked about how to set up an appointment with your healthcare provider with an online platform. So what that process will look like, how do you call, how do you utilize that information? Um, how do you call your insurance carrier to ensure that you're able to, to, uh, to have these sessions? Um, I talked about the idea that the companies like Blue Cross, Aetna and Beacon all have, have waived their fees for uh, their co-insurance, their co-payments and deductibles. We also discussed the difference between in-network and out-of-network providers, co-pays and versus co-insurance, and understanding what a, a deductible is. So giving them just an idea of if they do have a private carrier, how to go online to create their member um, ID with a password and be able to speak to a provider, and how would they go about trying to find a therapist on their own. In addition to that, on May 1st, we hosted a trauma panel. So the trauma panel was titled Trauma Management During COVID-19 in Communities of Color Beyond the Stigma. And um, I was the host for that particular panel. And we had the panelists is Dr. Bassett from LaGuardia Community College, Dr. White from Kane University, and Ms. Capel, who's a social worker in New York and works for a forensic uh, so fact team. Next slide, Lee. Okay. Also, we have information that we share in our daily blast to students that goes out on. And I let the students know about, you see one of our flies there, the espresso is, is yourself. So that's the cafe for every Friday in the month of April, which will bring back in the month of June. I give them some tips for anxious days and down at the below was a flyer for our new um, our newsletter. So we launched our newsletter on May 5th and it will be monthly going forward. It's titled Good Vibes 
and that has information for students on how to cope um, with anxiety, with depression. Um, obviously, you see one of the titles there is Yikes Online Classes and how to settle their anxiety around how do you navigate these online classes in, in this new um, module. I also sent out some information to students and part of our daily blast about free apps to utilize while they're sheltering in place. And those free apps included things like Fit On, which is like a fitness app, it's always free for everyone. Apps like Peloton, who offer its 90 days of free services where students can go on um, and, and use the service for Pilates, for yoga, meditation, for running, for running um, outside, outdoors, for audio only, and for cycling. So. They also had uh, an app called Down Dog, which was offering any yoga classes for 60 days for free. And there were some apps also from like HBO offering some free times to watch movies online. Lastly, in the month of June, uh, we have upcoming a platform on Zoom for a healthy eating, meal planning, and physical activity webinar. And we're going to focus on how to manage health from home. We have been getting a lot of questions from students about managing their health care. Some have been diagnosed with uh, high cholesterol or diabetes, and they want to be able to meal plan or figure out what type of activity to do at home to help them. In addition, we are bringing back the trauma panel for the end of May. Uh, we got a lot of requests for people who wanted to hear some more ideas from our panelists and hear some updated information as we get more information on COVID-19. So we're going to have that second panel come on May 27th and we'll share that information with everyone. And that's it for the Wellness Center and I'm going to pass it off to the Q&A. Okay, so um, one of the things that we forgot to stress at the very beginning of this, Dr. Farman, is that um, each community college runs independently of each other. So what, what one community college does, the other may or may not do. So what we've been really trying to do with this professional development series is just kind of highlight and give ideas to our colleagues out there as to what some of the institutions are doing and um, you know, thankfully, we were we were able to uh, to get our team here at Essex involved to highlight some of the the wonderful things that we've been sharing and doing for our students uh, during this time of need and crisis. And and once again, yes, it's all about the academics, but without them being healthy and 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 anything else and their well-being, their, their, their academics are going to suffer. So it all kind of comes together. And, and that's really what we wanted to demonstrate today. Um, one of, I only saw one or two questions in here. Uh, so I'm gonna answer the easiest one first. Uh, what about the fall semester, is it going online? Uh, that is really up to your college president and um, each, and, and actually the governor, you know, once the governor turns around and says, hey, you know, it's lifted or we're going to do a modified, you know, uh, comeback for the fall. But but that's really, you know, we, we need to determine once again with guidance from the state in terms of, of how we're moving forward. I can tell you here at Essex, we are planning for the fall semester right now. Uh, like everybody else, I think good planning is, is, uh, is key to this whole thing. Um, so really, once again, we, we need to wait to see what the governor says. And also, um, I guess it also depends on your area, too, and, and how hard hit it was, you know, in terms of, of uh, COVID-19. So one of the other questions uh, that we had, and Jamil, I think you'll be able to answer this one, is um, how are the student leadership presentations going to be conducted? So Jamil? <coughs> Well, I saw the question. I see it's um, from Russell. How you doing, Russell? I'm not sure if he was talking about the virtual student recognition event. Um, if that is the case, then what we're doing is it will be um, pre-recorded and the link will be shared um, with the entire college community. I'm quite sure that the college is going to share it beyond that. Um, what we've done is we've asked students to submit photos and short video. Um, some students have submitted images 
um, so that we can include as a part of the uh, presentation. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we're also going to be working on a, a, a virtual um, scholarship awards. Um, I had recently sent a video message to our students to try and reach them another way um, to reopen our scholarship application period. So we'll be working on something for that as well. Yeah, and, and I'm looking at the chat right now and Jamila, yes, you are correct. I guess it had to do with graduation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Dr. Kirkland, do you want to expand a little bit more maybe on some of the graduation events on, on how we're handling some of them? Well, or well, Mr. Graham has done, has had, has explained it. The uh -huh. virtual celebration of student achievement and the uh, student affairs awards night are the two main ones that we have coming up. Of course, we're delaying our commencement until later in the year until such time we can conduct one, but we will be conducting a commencement for our our graduates, this year's graduates. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and as, <clears throat> excuse me, and as everybody knows, you know, a lot of our events have either been canceled or, or moved. Um, I know our fundraising events here at the college have all been pushed back or pushed uh, to October and potentially next year in terms of fundraising. So I know that's heavy on everybody's mind as well. So we're still looking into those various events. Um, you know, we have a very big scholarship. There were two large events during the, the course of the year for scholarship. And uh, Dr. Kirkland and I were just corresponding via text <laughs> before, prior to this, you know, to discuss various dates. But once again, everything is pending. Okay, so I see another question over here. If the college, is the college open for face-to-face -face instruction? What are some of the safety protocols your college is putting into place for students, faculty, and staff? Well, right now, <clears throat> we're not open. <laughs> um, we do have some, some uh, staff here. Uh, actually, I'm here on campus today. Uh, we have very limited people here. Um, they only come in. We have a rotating schedule. Uh, once uh, there's one or two people here, maybe a day at, at, at this campus and then at the main campus and, and Dr. Kirkland, I know you're down there more than I am. Maybe you could talk about Newark. Well, I want to address Ms. Walker's question. We're going to be following whatever guidance that we get from the CDC for opening up uh, our school and our classes and um, uh, mitigation uh, to ensure that uh, we contain or we, we not allow COVID-19 to uh, be transmitted on our campus. Also, we too will also be responding to what our Governor Murphy gives us instructions on how we're going to uh, open our campuses and provide for the safety of our students. So as they're rolling that out, we will be implementing that through our COVID-19 uh, uh, task force and in, in informing our college community so that we all prepare for that day when it occurs. And, and one, of the thing, uh, one of the things that Essex I think has done really well has been uh, communicating to faculty, staff, and students. So whether it's through email, I know our website has been updated. You know, it's updated daily, pretty much. And um, you know, you saw in our in our slide presentation about our student daily messages. Well, that goes to everyone. So I, I think um, you know we've done a pretty good job of keeping everybody up on top of things uh, in terms of you know when, when, if, how, when, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of factors involved. And also too, we make every effort to reach out as Dr. Step like Johnson has said, to those that do not have internet, do not have computers. Wow. Well, in fact, we have a computer loan program that we actually loan computer workstations to students to assist them. Now it's perfect, are we getting everybody, but we're trying to get as many as we can to make sure that their, their education not been disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, and, and I think a lot, I mean, uh, we're not alone. I, I'm sure every other community college in the state of New Jersey is dealing with it somehow, some way. I know in our affinity group meetings, we hear of it all the time. Um, I think almost every institution, and Jake, correct me if I'm wrong, has developed some type of student loan program. Uh, in terms of um, you know computer equipment, so so we're we're all we're not unique. I think we're all experiencing at, at some level, maybe some more than others, right? 
So, okay, do we have, uh, I think those are, oh, okay, I'm, I'm checking, I'm still checking the chat over here. Okay, do, does anybody have anything that they want to add, Dr. Kirkland? Uh, just very quickly, I'd really like to thank uh, Joseph Ott from uh, West Essex Campus, coordinator for student life development for the work he did initially in preparing this slide. Also, we want to thank our graphic department for coming up with all these graphics for us, the people behind the scenes that made us look good today, and to Lee on her work in leadership and getting us to present to the, uh, the Distance Education Affinity Group. And uh, we're very proud and thankful for the opportunity. No, we thank you, right, Jake? <laughs> Absolutely, thank you, Dr. Kirkland. Thank you to the entire Essex County College team. I just have one wrap up thing as, as we're wrapping up. Uh, for all of you who are joining us today uh, and have joined us for some of, this, some of these webinars, this may sound like a broken record, but we wanna invite all of you, not only to be participants as far as uh, uh, learners, active learners in this space, but if any of you have some innovations, best practices, either uh, um, uh, that you're doing on your own in the classrooms or, or the supports that you're providing to students, um, or um, uh, your institution has, as Essex has, a, a, a well thought out uh, plan that has been implemented um, in helping more students, helping faculty and staff in the remote, uh, remote uh, space, please get in touch with me. You should have my contact information um, from the uh, email that you received from Eventbrite. Please get in touch with me, let, let me know. We would welcome you with open arms to uh, help us develop further webinar topics so we can share your expertise with our colleagues throughout the state. Um, in bucket one, like I said, these general ideas. But if you are a faculty member um, and you want to share your innovations and best practices in teaching your discipline, please get in touch with me. Uh, we would love to do a webinar on how to deliver mathematics education in a virtual environment. How do we do developmental ed? How do we do English? How do we do public speaking? Best practices, things of that nature that could offer two, three, four, five bits of wisdom to our colleagues throughout the state. And then bucket three, you know, we're all in a learning experience right now. And one thing we're looking for is um, what are some of the things we're learning right now from utilizing this technology, being in this remote environment that will serve us well going forward, heaven forbid, we have to pivot again. And it's not as much of a heavy lift because we all would have received training and professional development and things of that nature. So if there are practices that you see that you think you can implement in your day-to-day -day, um, work with students, uh, once we get back to some semblance of normal, send me those ideas too. Uh, again, we would love to, to partner with you and bring you on board to be one of our featured presenters. We're open to all ideas. We wanna make sure that all those innovations that are taking place at our community colleges by all of you and your colleagues are showcased and featured so that uh, we leave no stone unturned and that we provide the very best opportunities possible for the folks who are keeping our institutions up and running. And that's all of you. So thank you very much. With that, I'll turn it back over to uh, Dr. Bella de Castro. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I think next week, our, our next presentation we're gonna be working on is um, some tools in the classroom in terms of uh, Turnitin, plagiarism software, and- uh, Student feedback, yeah. Yeah, I think that's next week. So uh, everybody should be getting this email. So uh, we should have it out, I wanna say hopefully by Friday. Hopefully by Thursday or Friday, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully fingers crossed. But yeah, we're always looking for, for more presenters and this will be the same format. Uh, but we do wanna keep this going throughout the course of the summer. So, you know, the Distance Education Infinity Group has committed it ourselves. We have committed ourselves to, to providing, um, you know, this type of professional development in this time since nobody can get out to conferences. So here we are and, and uh, you know, we're providing this uh, PD to our sister in institutions. So, um, you know, we're here for you, I guess, right? Absolutely. So I think, and then, uh, so this has been recorded and the, um, the PowerPoint and the recording will be on, what's the website, Jake? Uh, njstudentsuccess.org. And, and one last thing, I see one uh, uh, question that just came in that I can address really quickly. We're monitoring through the Council of County Colleges, we are monitoring any and all opportunities that may become available. Of course, there's the 
I'm going to butcher the name, the New Jersey uh, Recovery Fund that's headed by uh, First Lady Murphy. Uh, those, uh, the first round of applications was due at the end of April. Uh, but there, there's one opportunity there for colleges to submit proposals for COVID-19, dealing with COVID-19, uh, as far as how you could re reconfigure for social distancing in a new normal. But we're also keeping an eye on uh, federal legislation for possible uh, additional stimulus packages that could provide additional relief to states and to higher education. Again, very preliminary stage. Don't want to get into politics as to who supports, who doesn't at this point. Very preliminary, but we're keeping an eye on that, working with the American Association of Community Colleges, as well as the Association of Community Colleges Trustees. And our website again is njstudentsuccess.org, njstudentsuccess.org. Okay. So I think that might be it for now, right? Well, one last question. If we have a quick minute, athletics plans for the, for the fall. I know that the athletics have been suspended at this point. Um, uh, Lee or Keith or any of the folks at Essex, have you heard anything on, on athletics at this point? Well, we know NJCAA is having meetings and they'll be rolling something out, hopefully by June 1st. We do, we have heard that and uh, we're like our, our director of athletics is participating and hopefully there'll be some guidance that way. That's great. Thank you. All right. So that's, I think that concludes. I that's think it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Essex team. Thank you so much. And thank you all to our uh, participants who joined us today. We hope you found this to be very informative and helpful. I certainly did. Uh, so thank you all. Nice job, Keith. Thank you, everybody. Nice job, team. Thank you. Essex Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Hey, I want to say bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you all. Goodbye. No, don't hang up, Keith. Hold on. Okay. <laughs>